Thought for the day, brothers and sisters, I wanted to speak uh, real briefly about prayer. What does the Bible say about prayer? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible says we are to pray without ceasing. Now, that doesn't mean we go every minute of the day, every hour of the day, praying continually. We have lives to live on this earth, and God understands. What I believe that scripture is saying is that we are to have a continual mindset in our prayer life with the events that are going on in our lives. Who better to go to than the Lord Jesus Christ himself, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, our Lord and Savior, when it comes to prayer? In Mark chapter 1, verse 35, the Bible says that before the sun even came up, while it was still dark, our Lord went up to pray to his Heavenly Father. A lot of the Lord Jesus Christ's prayer life was interceding for us. Romans chapter 8, verses 34 says that Christ intercedes on our behalf in heaven today. And in few verses before that, in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit assists us in our prayer lives because by nature we don't we do not know how to we do not know how to pray. Why? Because by nature our prayer lives will be self-centered about me, myself, and I, my what I want, my desires, my wants. One of the most effectual prayers, James chapter 5, verse 16 says, an effectual reverent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. But one of the most effectual prayers, I believe, is intercessory prayer. Just like Christ intercedes for us, we should intercede for others. And one way we can intercede for others is being available to help them when we hear of a prayer request. What do I mean by that? You can remember the story in Mark chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, when the Lord Jesus Christ healed a paralytic. But you remember, it took four men to bring that person to Christ in order for him to be healed. In the Gospel of John, chapter 6, the Lord Jesus Christ feeds 5,000 people. But in verse 9, we are told that a little boy was available with some fish and bread that Christ used to feed those people. A few chapters later, <clears throat> in the Gospel of John, chapter 9, our Lord Jesus Christ heals a man that's blind. But Christ, in verse 6, it said, spat on the ground, made some mud, and put it on the guy's eyes to heal him. I'm getting a little older, and I'm in my 50s. I have a what they call an age spot on my face right now. It's a little red spot. I could pray to God to heal me, make me well, and it could be God's will to do it. But sometimes, as I was saying, God uses means to heal us. And he'll put it in your heart to go to the pharmacy and get something from Neutrogena or L'Oreal, put it on your face, and in a few weeks, it, it'll go away to spot. This is what I'm trying to say, that sometimes we have to be available to help others when we hear of a prayer request. On New Year's Day, which is coming up soon, many people will make a what they call a New Year's resolution. A lot of people will say, God, help me to lose weight. My brothers and sisters, God is not going to help you lose weight unless you diet and go to the gym. God does not bless foolishness. So there are things that we need to do when it comes to prayer. Not that we change God, but God will change us. I hope this little devotion will help us all to remember that we ought to pray not so much for our own needs, but to pray for the needs of others. As I'm getting older and people around me, my family, friends are getting older and sicker and some have passed on, I'm seeing the need more and more to intercede for unsaved loved ones, people that don't know Christ. 33 years I've been saved by the grace of God and I can honestly say my prayer life, especially early on in my Christian walk, was really, really lacking. And I do think there was two reasons for that. One was I was so involved with getting to know the Bible, doctrine, um, the history of the scriptures, learning to uh, uh, understand the Bible and be able to repeat scripture verses, or remember scripture verses, that I filled up my head with a lot of scripture knowledge, which is important, but I lacked in my prayer life. And another reason why I believe my prayer life was lacking was because I, looking back now as I'm getting older, when I was younger, I had a lot of anger, 
because of things that went on in my life. And you see, Isaiah chapter 59, verse 2 says that your sins will separate you from God. That doesn't mean you can lose your salvation. Romans 8, 1 says there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. We can't lose our union with God, but remember this, you can lose your communion with God. You can slip on board the ship with your relationship with God, but you can't slip overboard, so to speak. So what happens is, is that if you have unrepentant sin in your life, your prayer life could be hindered. And you won't find yourself really getting much out of the scriptures. You can read it. You can see that it says pray without ceasing. You can see that it says Christ prayed early in the morning, but it won't register in your heart and your mind because you have unrepentant sin. 1 John 1, 9 says, Confess your sins to the Lord, and he'll be faithful and just to forgive us of your sins. I hope this little devotion will help us all, as I often do quote a lot of scripture verses, because I firmly believe that it, the Bible is the final authority in all matters of life, including our prayer lives. Take care this day, and God bless you all.